Please stand for our opening hymn in the Brown Hymnal, number 351, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, 351. Mm -hmm. Good morning. It is good to be here. It's good to worship together in this place. Um, good to be among the people of God and to feel that, you know, we're in God's presence in a real way. Um, there are two notices that I had. I didn't want to put them in the notices time. Uh, one is that I am considering uh, um, starting a membership class. So if you are not a member, you're interested, you can make note of that on those attendance pads. You can call me, uh, you can email me, text me, notify me that you're interested and we will put together a membership class um, to start this fall. The other thing is Safe Sanctuary training is going to become available in September um, and there's two different dimensions to that. One is the full training course, which if you haven't ever done it before, there is going to be one offered in Westfield. And I happen to know the trainer, and she will do an excellent job. It is my lovely wife. Uh, we don't have a date yet for that, but it's going to be the end part of September, most likely. The other dimension to Safe Sanctuary training is the refresher. You know, it used to be when Safe Sanctuaries began, you took the course and you were good. You didn't need to take anything else ever again. And then after a while, they said, you know what, we should do something more. And so then they said, well, if you've taken the, the basic Safe Sanctuary training, 
you should do a refresher like every other year. Uh, and that's where we are now. And so if we have folks that have taken it and you like, I'm good with it, um, you can also note, note that on the pew pad or contact me or contact my wife just to say, I had the training, I want the refresher. Something uh, that might be helpful to you, the refresher is going to be an online multiple choice test. And you're going to take the test online at your own time, in your own space. Then you get the result to her, and she will verify that you passed um, and that you are refreshed in the Safe Sanctuary training course. Uh, so it's not going to be an in-person, you have to come to a, a place. It's She's going to send you a multiple choice test. You get to do it and, uh, and hopefully pass. Because if you don't pass, then I would worry that you need more than a refresher. So th those two things I wanted to speak to personally. Uh, our prayer time is so, so important and we need to keep um, a prayer time alive in our life and also in our congregational life. And I do hope that you block out some time in your daily uh, life for regular and devoted prayer. Uh, it's, it's just important. It's good for your spiritual health. It's like when you are uh, trying to stay healthy, you exercise, you eat right. When you want to stay spiritually healthy, you pray on a regular basis. and You keep that prayer part of your life. You want to be in conversation with God. Um, and not just in a negative way, right? I hear a lot of people talk to God in a very negative way, day in and day out. Um, I think God gets tired of it doesn't like his name being used in vain. Um, so keep, keep on positive conversation ground with God. A couple of things I want to mention, ongoing prayer for uh, Linnea's grandson, Taylor. Um, he's still out, is he still out in Idaho fighting fires? Keep him in prayer for, for safety. Mark Smith, is uh, Kathy is not here today because Mark had a rough week. He was in the R three times this past week. Uh, keep Mark Smith in your prayers. Don Thorpe is here. He had successful eye surgery, praise God. And we're glad you're here this morning, Don. Uh, others in the bulletin, remember them. And also the Church of the Week is uh, the Bolivar and Oliet Trinity and Rivers Edge communities. Pastor Don Quesenberry and her husband Mike and their family. Keep them in your prayers as well. So let us turn our hearts and our thoughts to God as we pray this morning. Oh God, we thank you for this day of life and breath and the ability to think and reason, the ability to be individuals and to be the church as a collective body of believers. We thank you for this day, and we praise you that you are wonderfully and fearfully our Lord, and you are omnipotent and all-powerful, all-knowing and seeing, and that you love us. We are limited and fragile and so human, and we bring so many troubles just because of our humanity. So many struggles because of our humanity. We pray, God, that you would continue to love us. Continue to be patient with us as we struggle through this life. Give us wisdom and guidance. Counsel us in how we need to act. And, and the things we need to do to be active in our faith. Oh God, we love you. We know how you love us. You love us enough to send your only begotten son into the world. And he loved us enough to go to the cross for us. And that is awesome. And it's amazing. God, we, we remember these people listed in our bulletin. Um, that they need extra care. 
And we do think of Nancy and Sandy and Mark and Don and Nancy Weimer and Martha and Rod. We lift up Dawn Pleasantberry and the congregations that she pastors and her husband Mike and their family. Pray for your holy anointing upon them. We pray for other congregations that need direction, that need to know your love, and they need to know, Lord, that they are a part of this family. Oh God, we thank you. Now we lift up people who uh, may not be listed, but they're on our hearts. Valerie and Brittany. Yes. 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 Connie and her family battling COVID. Mm. Yes, Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. God, we remember all these people and we lift them to you. We know that you will watch over them, bring healing and comfort and strength. And now we lift our voices as we pray that prayer you taught your own disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our middle hymn, our hymn of encouragement today, is number 187 in the brown. It is called Cleanse Me. And order, you'll recognize it as we begin it.
Just curious, how many of you know or remember that song? How many? Oh, not not the, song, the tune. The tune. The tune. Any more remember the tune? Okay. A few more. Remember the tune. Yeah, when I first saw Cleanse Me, I'm going, do I know this? And then as you listen to it, I think it becomes familiar to us all. Uh, Our morning scripture is from Luke's Gospel, Luke 13, uh, not very lengthy, it's 10 through 17, just seven verses this morning. Uh, one Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. And then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised and healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working. He said to the crowd, Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, You hypocrites! Each of you, don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released, even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things that Jesus did. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm sure some of you somewhere are still in vacation mode. And maybe some of you like camping. I don't know. Some of you like going to the national parks. Anybody like going to the national parks? I love going to the parks. Um, so this, this is the statement before these various statements by different people. Not everyone's a happy camper. These are suggestions to improve our parks left on Forest Service feedback forms by helpful visitors. Okay, got that image in your mind? The coyotes made too much noise last night. They kept me awake. <laughs> Please eradicate these annoying animals. Next one is this. Need more signs to keep the area pristine. A small deer came into my camp and stole my bag of pickles. Is there a way I can get reimbursed? Please call. Trails need to be wider so people can walk while holding hands. Aw, that's a sweet one. Trails need to be reconstructed. Please avoid building trails that go uphill. <laughs> Person was not a hiker, apparently. A McDonald's would be nice at the trailhead. I think we gotta go back here to keeping the area pristine. Um, too many rocks in the mountains. <laughs> And last one, found a smoldering cigarette left by a horse. <laughs> Doubtful at best. Would you join me in prayer this morning? O oh Lord our God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Title of today's message is Sabbath Cure. Sabbath Cure. So I want to talk about healing. Healing is still happening. Hey, hey, Pastor, did you hear about the football game last week? It was a good game. Can we talk about that? Wait, I want to talk about healing. This is very important. 
Hey, Pastor, how is your garden doing this year? You got any zucchinis? Listen up. I want to talk about healing and the power of God. Hey, Pastor, did you remember there's an election coming up this Tuesday? You got to get out and vote. I want to talk about healing and this woman who met Jesus in the synagogue. Hey, Pastor, are you ready for school? There's all kinds of sales going on right now. Aren't you excited for school? I am talking about healing and how God is active, alive, and doing miracles every day. Hey, Pastor, we're not in that dispensation right now, are we? Can't be any healing going on. I am talking about healing and the love of God for people of every kind, every age, every affliction. Healing. Do you believe in healing? Do you believe that healing still happens? Do you ever pray for healing? Do you ever pray over someone for healing? Have you ever asked for healing? Often when we talk about something important, someone else will interrupt and change the conversation, especially if they're uncomfortable with the topic. Ever happen to you? Start to talk about something and somebody takes the conversation, they hijack it in a different direction, and you're like, wait a minute, I want to talk about this topic because it's so important. But not everyone believes the same. You can look around you at the people sitting near you, and you may believe differently than they do. So Jesus was coming to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he saw a lady who had been bent over for 18 years. He didn't hesitate. It says, when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, dear woman, you are healed of your sickness and then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight and how she praised God notice that Jesus said she was afflicted by an evil spirit today we might say that evil spirit was arthritis or osteoporosis or perhaps another ailment that we would recognize but Whatever the case, she had been bent over for those 18 long years. And Jesus did not hesitate to perform this healing. She was delighted to receive this healing. You better believe it. Does not say that she came seeking the healing. Just that she was there and Jesus saw her. He was glad to heal her body, and we assume that her soul was healed as well. She was unfettered from the clutches of Satan. The man, the leader of the synagogue, was overjoyed, wasn't he? He jumped for joy when Jesus did this, right? What? No? No, he did not. Are you kidding me? What was wrong with him? Well, kind of like my opening, he was focused on a different story at the moment, wasn't he? The leader of the synagogue immediately says, Hey, people, there are six days for working. Come on any of those days to be healed. You don't need to wait and come on the Sabbath. In fact, he didn't want people to come for healing on the Sabbath. You see his point? He considered the healing to be work. He did not want Jesus working on Sabbath. This was a big no-no in the Jewish religion. There were pages and pages about what could be done or what could not be done. It's from the command of God to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Exodus 20. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This was not the first time Jesus had offended the leaders by doing healing on the Sabbath. 
But Jesus is quick to point out their hypocrisy. He points out that the word they do, when they lead their ox or their donkey or their goat or their sheep to get water, even on the Sabbath, and they will do it. God until water the animals. And he correlates the binding of their beast with the way Satan found this woman for so long. If it's not okay to unbind your animal, how much more okay is it to unbind this woman? prayed for healing. She had been diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. It, it's a degenerative and progressive illness. And so at one time she prayed, she prayed hard for this to be cured, her personal cure. But at that time, she did not receive a cure. She remained ill. It affects the legs, it affects all the body, it affects your eyesight, uh, it makes you, you're very, very tired. You can't go very far, you can't do as much. Uh, and she was tired of having the illness. And she was on some very high powered medicine um, that she was taking. But when she prayed that prayer, that particular time, God gave her a sense of healing about her relationship with her mother-in-law. Imagine that. And she went to speak to her mother-in-law. She apologized for being a bad daughter-in-law to her. The woman was flabbergasted. It was the last thing she expected. Because they had had over the years many harsh words in the past. Words that were building a wall between them. And now my sister came with a new attitude. She came with a clean heart. She said to me, Michael, it was like a brick wall had fallen down that separated us. She compared it with the falling of the Berlin Wall. So think about that image. We saw the wall getting torn down. And that's what happened when she prayed. That wall began to crumble in her life. Suddenly, she was not angry at her anymore. She had found forgiveness in her heart. And it made a change, a drastic change in her relationship. Eventually, this transformation in their relationship would lead to her mother-in-law coming to a Bible study that would eventually lead her to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ. And my sister said, in retrospect, this was way more important than her getting a personal cure from her MS. The healing of that rift with her mother-in-law that led to her salvation. So what ails you? What is chaining your spirit down? What is afflicting you or bending your spirit down? God wants to heal you. God is still healing people today. Don't doubt it, but have faith. You might have heard that there are only three answers when we pray. Yes, no, wait. As I said before, William Barclay, theologian and scholar, said this. Every prayer will be answered. But not always the answer that we desire. Not the answer we want. And unfortunately, I guess I'm on the wrong slide. Hang on. I got it. I missed that one. Sorry. Yes, no, and wait. And we're not always happy with the no and the wait, are we? We prefer God to be like that heavenly vending machine where we call up a prayer, he sends down the answer, and in the synoptic gospels, there are 22 recorded healing stories about Jesus. If you read them all, you will see they are not identical stories. They are all unique situations, unique events. Each person in the situation is unique, and each cure given is unique. You know, sometimes Jesus touched the person, 
Oftentimes he did not touch them. Sometimes he was close. Sometimes he was not. Sometimes he would ask them to do something else, another step. Like the man he said, go and wash in the particular pool and you will be healed. Sometimes he prayed right away, sometimes not. And often, as you read these accounts, you'll notice he says, your faith has made you well. One time, and I love it, he used spit and mud on a man's eyes to bring healing. Spit and mud. And one, you know, after I studied that passage one time, I read an article and scientists were studying mud. And they were saying there are amazing properties in common dirt and common mud that we haven't explored. But there are healing properties in the dirt we walk on. Only God would do that. One time, he had to repeat the action more than once. Do you remember that? The man couldn't see. Jesus touched him, prayed over him, and he said, can you see now? He said, people are like, like trees stumbling around. And Jesus had to repeat and do it again. But eventually, he saw clearly. Jesus showed us that healing is possible. Not always easy, not always as we expect. One time the disciples came to him and said, Lord, we tried to heal this person, but we couldn't do it. And Jesus told them that this healing required much prayer. So what do we learn? Every person is unique and so is the healing that surrounds them. I would imagine in this very room, there are many stories of healing. Anybody like to share this morning? You're not ready to share. But maybe in the future you would. Yes. Yes, I had cancer for about 20, uh, 25 years ago, and I'm still here. Praise God. Praise God. I had a lot you, of prayers. That did, didn't you just have a birthday? I did. Happy birthday. You Thank know. you. 85. And Twenty-five years. We got married at sixty and seventy, and who would have thought we'd had twenty-five years? <laughs> praise God! Twenty-five years married, and praise yeah, let's clap. <laughs> Thank you for being brave to share. Anybody else feel like sharing? Yes. I had a stem cell transplant uh, fourteen years ago, and it worked, and I'm still here. Praise God. He's got a hand clap. Cheryl. I was in Cuba on a mission trip one time, and they announced to us that the women, American women, were going to perform a healing service, a healing prayer for people. That was like, you want to talk about stretching outside your comfort zone? But we had a time of intense worship, and then we went up into the front, and I started laying my hands on people that many that came forward. And the most unusual thing occurred. The Lord actually told me what the health problem was. The, first, the people stood in front of me silently and as I put my hands on them, he told me it's their heart. Oh, it's a cortisone. And of course, a mood for health in your heart. And then I went to the next person and he said, it's their kidneys. For And one woman, it was for deliverance. She had an evil spirit. But he, his spirit, and it was so neat. It's like, amen. God is alive. And amen. he's a healer. To this day, he's the same. Yeah. The same. We worship the same God. Yes. And a God of power. Yes. And a God who wants people to be healed. Amen. Really does. I, I have one story that I want to relate. Tony Campolo, who many of you might recognize, sociologist and preacher. Actually, he was a preacher first, and then um, the people couldn't handle him. And so he became a sociologist who preached on occasion. But he shared a story one time that he was doubtful about God's power in prayer and healing. And he was at a meeting and 
one of the other speakers said, come on, we're going to have a prayer meeting in the back over this particular young lady. She needs prayer, and she needs to be healed. And Tony was skeptical, but he went back there. And he joined a group, and they prayed over this young woman. Well, the healing was not immediate. It was not instantaneous. In fact, it seemed like there was no change. So he went on with his life. But like 10 years later, he was speaking at a place, and a woman, beautiful young woman, comes up to him and says, you prayed for me, and I got healed. Little by little, day by day, not all at once. God doesn't always heal instantly, but God works amazingly. And it, guess what part of the transformation was? Tony Campolo said, I got to believe in this God that heals people. God is a God of miracles. My sister would pray for healing over her MS. And years later, years later, under different circumstances, uh, she got healed of her MS. It was not in her timing. It was in God's timing. It was in God's timing. God is a God of miracles, a God of healing. You might say to me, Pastor, I prayed for thus and so, and it never happened. Well, all I can say is there's a reason for it. God's timing is right. God will answer you as God sees proper. Yes, no, wait. Sometimes we pray, and we pray hard, and the person we love dies. You know that happens sometimes, don't you? We can also call that permanent healing, right? Right? If they die, they're going to heaven to be with God for all eternity. They get a new body, a resurrection body, and I believe they are healed for all time. When someone goes to heaven, they will not die again. But we want to make sure they go to heaven. Once they die, they go to heaven they're not going to get the sniffles or the COVID or be sick or infirm. It's a permanent healing. And best of all, they will be with Jesus, the ultimate healer. The one who gives us streams of living water, waters of life. God wants us to experience life in abundance. That means healing as well. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus teaches about prayer, and I love the heading because the heading is effective prayer. You might say, Pastor, I don't know how to pray. I wasn't trained in prayer. Uh, how did you learn to pray? Maybe at the knee of your parents, maybe at bedside, say your prayers, maybe at the dinner table as you pray for the food and thank God for the food you've given. But I think we should all memorize Matthew 7, 7. And this is the version, the New Living Translation version. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. It's that continuous action. Keep on praying. Keep on asking. Seeking, knocking, and it will come. It will come. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear Jesus, you are the author of life. You are the one who brings healing and health. We lift up those who need healing. Those among us need healing physically or mentally or spiritually. God, touch them today. Bring your spirit upon them for healing. In Jesus' name, we pray it all. Amen. I want to offer healing, and uh, I don't have a lot of time. On Sunday mornings, but if you if you want 
during our closing song, if you come forward, uh, I would be happy to pray with you, pray over you. Uh, and anybody who feels led may come forward as well and uh, assist in the prayers. Uh, just an offer that's available that God is a God of healing and power. Because God loves us and he wants us to have this abundant life, um, I think we should be thankful for it. I think we should be thankful for every day we're given. Every day is a gift. And the way God loves us, the way God cares about us is just amazing. I don't know how people get through life who don't know God. And I know God is always... Um, trying to reach people, uh, even people who are reluctant, even people who are resistant. God is continually trying to reach them. The um, question always is, are their eyes open? Are they, are they listening? Are they open to receive whatever God has for them? And mo most often, for some reason, they are not. And... Woe to that person or woe to that congregation that puts a block in front of somebody uh, between them and God. Woe to them. Anyway, all of this to say that I'm thankful for the way God blesses me and our family. Um, not always easy, but God's always there through it. And, and so part of our giving is an outpouring of that thanks. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for us. So I'm going to offer a prayer over our tithes and offerings, and then we will sing our doxology. And our song is, Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul, number 444, in the Brown Hymn Book. Let's pray, though. God, thank you for the gift, the many gifts, that you give, the gift of life, the gift of patience, the gift of uh, life in the word, and the way that you are our God, and the way that you love us day by day, way that you us and care about us. Oh God, we thank you for it. I pray over our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings, Lord, that you would receive them, that you would bless them, that you would multiply them for the work here and all around the world. And of course, we pray it in the name of God, Father, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
a great song. What a great thought. Heaven coming down, filling our souls. And I hope that as you go from here, your soul is filled up and overflowing so you can share with others. I feel led to give a little story that happened to me that blessed me. Is that okay? Go ahead. Those of you that knew my husband knew that he helped fly balloons for over 25 years. He was with crew. And he passed the end of October. And so the following June, it was in June that they usually started up again. And uh, I did not know it. I was home at the time. But my neighbor told me a couple days after it happened, Eileen, that was wonderful to see that balloon. That hot air balloon over your house for about 10, 15 minutes. It just stood there. And I said, I didn't know. She said, well, all the neighbors knew. They were all standing out there looking up there. We live just off of Hunt Road. That balloon is huge. Think of the pe This is around 6 o'clock at night. Think of the people that saw the face of Christ on that balloon. So... About a month later, I saw the person that was flying the balloon, and I said, thank you so much for what you did, giving that, you know, honor to my husband by flying that balloon, because I didn't do anything. He said, we're flying along and the air left. There was no air. We stood still. He said, I went up, tried to find a cross street. No air. No air. We just stood there until the wind started blowing again. Who controls the air, folks? God does. That was a blessing to me and my family. That hot air balloon didn't beat nearly as much to other people as it did to me. And I knew at that point my husband was in heaven. That's what it meant. And I think God would say, take care of yourself, Arlene. Worry about where you're going. Let's join together in our unison benediction. Oh God, make haste to help us, heal us from infirmity, and bring new life. In God we ask, Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you for joining us. God bless your day. Good morning.